Welcome to episode 37. I am your host, Paul Sadin. And as you can tell, those of you on the video feed, uh, all kinds of lights on in the recording studio because I'm recording this incredibly late. If I were to do a time hack on myself, military, military terminology, it's 10 after 9 on a um, quick math 17-hour day. So hopefully this episode will have everything, including my uh, just endless, boundless energy. So boundless, in fact, that I can't actually think of the word boundless. Hey, this time around, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, do something different that I wanted to do for a long time. And I got the permission from these individuals and I wanted to do it. So I thought it was important to do it at this point in the show. Being the 37th episode, next episode, uh, we're going to have a huge uh, writer on Chris Fox. A lot of you know him uh, as a 5,000 words per hour writer and uh, a book writer. And he does a number of other, not only uh, nonfiction, helpful books for writers, but also his own fiction. He's going to come on and talk about mind mindness, or he's going to come on and talk about mindset, mindfulness, and um, some deeper stuff too. It gets real personal. So it was a great episode. Before we did that, and um, before we got into another topic, because I've got a whole bunch of new stuff I want to talk about, I wanted to do this. The reason, good news, the reason I wanted to do this now was to focus on these things, because after Chris's interview, when I do these shorter tidbits, I'm going to start talking not necessarily about craft, because that's not what horrible writing is about, but I want to talk about some processes because, folks, Chasing the Demon is live on Amazon. Uh, get some. Uh, so you can go pre order it now. It's going to come out on June 10th for those of you listening now. For those of you in the future, it's already out there. Go get it. Um, at least digital copy. The print version, yeah, which is why I want to talk about some things in future episodes. So we'll we'll do that at that point. It should be quite interesting. Before we get to those not necessarily technical conversations and continue with the author interview series, I wanted to take some time out because I got two emails almost back to back that I really wanted to highlight because I think one of the best things, the most beneficial things, one of the most healthy things that we can do for ourselves as writers is build community. It doesn't need to be 10,000 strong. It doesn't need to be 1,000 strong. It doesn't need to be 10. It just needs to be a community. And I got that recently from this show and two wonderful people who reached out to me almost on back-to-back -back days. So it kind of really inspired this episode. The first email is from Kelsey Porter. And uh, Kelsey said she just wanted to let me know that she started listening to the podcast and she wanted to thank me. And I always, um, the, you know, I can be boisterous, I can be a braggart, but it's in good fun. I really don't think that much about myself. I really don't. Um, even though I project it into the world, it's most of it's uh, self-effacing fun. Anyways, uh, so I always get a little nervous when I see emails start like that because I don't feel like I do anything worthy of thanks. She goes on to talk about, um, I've gone away, I'm sorry, she, I've gone way too long without writing and I'm diving back in, which is always awesome to hear. Everything I've read has said to put yourself amongst other writers, but I'm so shy and short of time. Listening to you makes me feel like I am part of a community and I'm getting great tidbits of information. Keep doing what you're doing. Signed, Kelsey Porter. So first, Kelsey, thank you very much for taking the time to write that. You know, some people might say, hey, that was a really short email. Uh, no big deal. No, it really is. When you put things out there, you all who have published books know this. Those of you who do podcasts know this. You put things out there. You try your hardest to figure out 
how to create noise on social media. And sometimes it's like you're screaming into the vacuum of space. It's difficult. So when you hear something back, it's, it's encouraging. It really is. And uh, so Kelsey taking the time to do that was incredibly encouraging. But to say that I have a little part, that this show, Horrible Writing, has a little part to play in her sense of community means a lot. I'm gregarious. I'm outgoing. I'm an extrovert. I don't have a problem really talking, unless you're an asshole, I really don't have a problem talking to anyone. And I don't know what it's like to be really shy. I don't know what it's like to be an introvert. I don't know what it's like to be more comfortable in your house than out of your house. I try to be empathetic, but I don't know, right? I don't, that Gnosticism, I don't have knowledge of those things. So I try to take a little bit of a world perspective from people who reach out to me to know that I just have a little sliver of a part to play for her is really humbling. It really is. It means a lot. Had she never said anything, I would have never known that. And this isn't about, hey, I want you all to send me emails. I do love them. But it's not about that. It's just about the importance of reaching out to people who help you, who support you, who inspire you, whatever it may be on this writer's journey. It's a lonely gig. It really is. I'm fortunate enough to have a podcast audience, people who've gone and listened to my fiction podcasts and who are on Patreon. And I absolutely love my patrons. Yes, financially, they help me do all those things I need to do, like pay for my ho web hosting and podcast hosting and all that crazy stuff and pay for some actors and production. But beyond that, um, it's really, it, you know, it's a drop in the bucket of my expenses. I don't make, I don't even break even still, but the fact that there are people out there, 37 people out there who are willing to, you know, even throw a dollar or $3, $10 my way is great. More importantly to me as a creator are those 37 people, not their wallets or their credit cards, but the people. Because to me, it means so much more that somebody's actually willing to part with a couple bucks, a cup of coffee a month, whatever it may be, to say, you know what, what you do means enough to me that I want to support you. And I, when I'm not crazy busy like I have been, which is why I'm recording this at nine o'clock at night on a Thursday when it should have been out to my patrons a couple of days ago and it's supposed to go live on Sunday. Um, when life isn't like this, I try to stay much more engaged with them because I need that community. How can you find your community as a writer and serve it? Don't go into the community with the mindset that gimme, 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 I need, I need, I need. And I'm not saying that's what Kelsey did. Kelsey doesn't do that at all. I don't know Kelsey. I do know that she was kind enough to take time out to write me an email and thank me for the little part of a difference that I make. And I, that's so important. Go find your community, whatever that is, and contribute. Give of yourself to other people. You will receive when you give. And take that time to say thank you. I try to do it as often as I possibly can to those people who make a world of difference to me. You've heard me say that on this show numerous times, and that's never changed. I'm grateful for the people who always take the time out for me. Go find your community. Who is it? Who do you want to be around? Who's healthy for you to be around? There are some places that are not healthy. And give of yourself and in time you will get trust me now there was a second one that i also wanted to uh talk about here and it was it's from natalie Ackid. and natalie is a an, an awesome listener uh she follows a couple of my shows and i've come to know her through fandom and i hate that word it makes me feel icky about myself um but she likes some of the other the fiction stuff I do, so that's cool. And I've gotten to know her, and I know that she's a writer, and she's you know working on her own things. But again, you know, she did something very much like what Kelsey did, reached out to me, 
And she was talking about the episode 34 with Chris Grunland, where we talked about dyslexia. I always go back to Raul Vega. I think it was episode 16 from Rose Drive podcast. He was the one who texted me one day and he said, hey, man, I love horrible writing, but maybe you could talk about this topic being ego. And I said, hey, maybe I can. Why don't you come on and we'll have an interview about it. And out of that um, just good natured ribbing. This interview series was born. And. Before I actually, I mean, it was like two months before I actually interviewed him. I was thinking about what am I going to do to talk about other writers? Everybody's doing it. And that's why I thought about this is called horrible writing. Let's talk about the horrible stuff in writing, the personal stuff, because we're all people. We all struggle. We all have skeletons in our closet and things we don't want you to know about out there in public. We all wear a mask. And um, behind that mask is the real person. So it's always been so rewarding for me to see all these authors and these writers and these audio dramatists be willing to come on the show and talk about those things. And Chris has been getting a lot of positive feedback about his interview on dyslexia. So regardless of whether you know or you are someone in your life uh, who is dyslexic, you probably interact with someone who is and you just don't know it but beyond that there's a there's a humanistic element to what chris talks about in there and it's very healthy for all writers regardless of station which i believe is true of all the interviews regardless of the topic we could take things out of each awesome writer that comes on the show and talks natalie uh said you know i was i loved hearing from chris grunland christopher grunland It's always wonderful to hear from others with challenges to writing. To hear from someone with the same learning disabilities as me was even better. These things we just don't anticipate, right, folks? As usual, oh, well, she goes on to say something about me. (laughs) We're not here for me. Thank you both. Uh, Thank you to both you and Mr. Gronlin for your time, commitment, and knowledge. It was truly inspiring. That ties in with what Natalie had to say to me um when another creative is inspired by something that you're doing embrace it remember it because you're going to have crappy days you're going to have lousy days you're going to have very bad days where you hate yourself and you hate your writing and everything you do is crap so grasp onto those things don't let go of them don't tout them around like a trophy to shove in everybody's face But at the same time, remember that those things that you are doing are worthy. They're they're adding value. They're making someone's life better. And uh, you just can't put a price on that. Take the time to thank the people who do make a difference. I'm not, this is not a call to action for you to send me a thousand emails, though I would love a thousand emails. You know what I'd like more than emails is some (laughs) ratings and reviews on your podcatchers. Uh, in the past, I used to ask for five star ratings and reviews, and I've done some reading on Amazon reviews, um, for books, right? Trying to get smart about positioning, chasing the demon, and what do I do marketing wise? And uh, I've understood the the theory behind just ask for genuine reviews, which makes sense. So go leave a genuine review. Maybe this isn't a five star show for you, but you kind of like it four star or three star <laughs> go leave those reviews and ratings i want to find other writers the more people the more ratings and reviews you leave the more people who can find the show because apple will put it up in front of them more prominently not a whole bunch more but each one counts and then on top of that the more people who find it the more chance i have of finding an author to interview a writer a poet an audio dramatist that's going to come on and say something amazing. Next episode, episode 38, Mindset with Chris Fox, is going to be one of those. Chris talks about all kinds of stuff. And if you don't know who he is yet, go out to wherever you get your books from as a writer and look at some of his craft stuff. He just did one on plot gardening, which I got the other week, 
as soon as it came out and I'm going through it now. Uh, but he does some, he really, he, he's my style. I think that's maybe why I like him so much. Uh, no excuses. Do you want to do this or not? Let's go. You know, one of those kind of people. So it, he really appeals to me. Um, so that one's coming up. Uh, and, and we've got some great stuff in the future, but I want more. I, I always want more. I want to talk to all the amazing people out there who are writing. And I am life goal bucket list has been checked off. Chasing the Demon is on Amazon. Paul Sating, S-A-T-I-N-G. Go find me out there. Go give me a follow. Help me start building that um, presence, if you will. Also on Goodreads. I have an author page on Facebook now, which I'll put in the show links. So you can actually go follow that. And we can actually talk craft over there. Uh, so if you kind of get along with my personality, you want more of a sense of community. It's very small. I just started it. Some friends helped join me. Some fans from my audio drama join me. So it's really cool. But it's not all about me. It never is. It's really about that community. Because when I'm in a healthy community, I'm a healthier person. And regardless of what you're going to read when 12 Deaths of Christmas comes out, uh, my stories are healthier. <laughs> Oh, that's fu you'll see why that's funny uh, come the holiday season. Those are some pretty wicked stories. I'm kind of proud of them. All right. So uh, ratings, reviews, and Chasing the Demon. Go pre-order it. 99 cents. You can't beat that, right? I just want to get that story out there shared. It's, uh, it was an interesting exploration. I'd written a couple draft novels before that, but this was a straight-up adaptation from Subject Found Season 1 into novel form, added some new content to it. It was cool to do. It was a lot of fun. I'm really excited about it. And, you know, if uh, they got to put me in the ground tomorrow, I did it. Achieved the bucket list. That's what I should name this episode, but it's not about that. It's about uh, these fine folks who reached out to me. So that is way too long of an episode for an inter intermediate uh, episode between all the interviews. But I'm just flying. Between the book launch, and hearing from these wonderful people and, and knowing that I'm serving a community, it's, it's been a good little bit of a run here. And I just am happy. For those of you looking at the YouTube version of this, you can tell, right? I'm very happy. So until episode 38 with Chris Fox, keep being epic. This has been Horrible Writing, and hopefully after this episode, you suck less than you did at the beginning. I am Paul Sating, your host, Extraordinaire. You can find me over on the Twitterverse at Writing Horrible and over at paulsating.com forward slash horrible dash writing. Until next time, suck less.